Vou entrando ao vivo. Oi, oi, oi. E eu vou esperar a galera que tá chegando. Mas eu já tô aqui, hein? Quem quiser vir, pode vir. Acho que eu vou lá no Instagram chamar o pessoal. To join us. Let's see. I'm going here. Let's just start small live class here. Small call, live call. Oi, gente! Omar, Pearl, hello, hello! How are you guys? Hope you are fine. We are at 10 minutes um, earlier, early today, but anyway, it's just because I wanted to wait for the students here. Oi, gente! Tudo bom? Ó, só para te avisar, eu já tô ao vivo lá no YouTube. I'm already live in our YouTube channel, so... Can you guys already here tell me if you can listen to me okay? How is the sound for you guys? Is everything fine? Olá, pessoas! Tudo bem? Que legal! Quanta gente aqui no Instagram também! Uau, uau, muito bom. Olá, ó, oh, que já tá aqui, o mapa, safe. Ah, very good. I have a big echo effect. How is that possible? Oh, I know why is that possible. That's because of this. And one hour, one hour, Pearl. Is it better? Without an echo, echo. How do you say that? Is that better? Hey guys, in Instagram, I'm just here. I'm setting things on YouTube because we are starting our live class now. So I'm here just to call you. Come to our YouTube channel. Join me. We're going to see some differences, especially regarding to pronunciation between Brazilian Portuguese and European Portuguese. This class would be nice. Hey, Jacob! <laughs> oh, now it's better. Ah, okay, bom. So, who is there? Oh, thank you, guys. So, oh, you are invited to join me in this class. It would be really nice. We still have six minutes, so while you're here on Instagram and you guys are already here on YouTube, just tell me uh, what is the, your favorite variation of Portuguese? So, uh, what dialect do you prefer? You prefer the Brazilian one, you prefer the European one, or any African one? I don't know. So, uh, you are here, probably you're following us Portuguese. We teach Brazilian Portuguese. So maybe you like Brazilian Portuguese, but maybe you want to learn European Portuguese and you want to know more about Portugal and this awesome and wonderful culture. So maybe it's that your option. So tell us which one you uh, like the most, Brazilian or European? Brazil. Hey, Greg. Olá. Okay, let me see Brazilian. <laughs> Prefiro brasileiro, Brasil, Brazilian. Isso que legal, muito bom. Honestly, both. Yeah, me too. They are different. They are, I, I actually, of course, I'm Brazilian. So for me, I prefer my version of Portuguese. But both are beautiful, right? So they have your their like beauty and uh, specialties, you know. But I'm glad to see a lot of people saying Brazil. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, but Brazil is much better. That's what you think, Jacob. Gary, Portuguese brasileiro. Okay, let me see. I'm sad. It's got a mean name. Your mean name? What is that? I'm sorry. Oh, Jacob, thank you. Time for the likes. Adriele wants 20 likes. Yeah, that's it. I always want 20 likes. But I will increase this number soon, you see? It's a bit easier for me to understand European Portuguese. And her here has a hard to understand accent. Yeah. For some people, it's hard. 
and you're going to see a video that I'll show you that even Portuguese, that this Portuguese guy, when he listens to Portuguese people speaking, he thinks they are saying something in Russian, I guess. Uh, let me see what else. It's very similar, it's just easier to understand when he's talking. Yeah. Yay, very good, guys. Very good. Muito bom. Isso aí. So, guys, three minutes to go. So, let me see. Oh, the Carioca accent. Te amo, Brasil, Greg. Me too. I love Brazil. Ficando. Na verdade, tá dando um eco que o pessoal falou. Daí eu dei uma cortada aqui no nos outros devices. Tá tudo certo com o som? Vocês estão me ouvindo bem, guys? Are you listening me well? I guess. I guess it's fine, right? Let me see the comments you're talking about Portugal and Brazil here. Uh, why Portuguese? Too much Mussolino and feminino confuses. What is that? Oh, masculino e feminino. Yeah, I have gender agreement and gender differences. Yes. Eu queria morar no Brasil. Come, vem morar no Brasil. Come to live here. What are you waiting for? <laughs> I know it's not that easy, that simple, but come, join me. Join us here in Brazil. Uh, let me see what you guys here on YouTube are saying. Unless you're specific. The population of Brazil is about 220 million compared to about 11 million in Portugal. Yeah. We are bigger than Portugal, guys. Yes. If you're going to learn one more than the other, you will far more likely to encounter Brazilian than Portuguese. Yes, it'll be easier to talk, of course. If you found more friends, you found more people to talk, to engage in a conversation, or if you're looking for a partner um, or friends, probably you find more Brazilians around the world. And um, But of course, it depends on what you want. So Jacob is saying, unless you're specifically traveling to Portugal, yeah, or moving to Portugal. So if you're going to live in Portugal, in Europe, probably is the best is learn Portuguese, European Portuguese, the version Portugal. But anyway, the language is the same. We just have some differences, right? So, um, oh, safe said I went to Madeira last year. Some of the words are very funny. Oh, legal. It's like comparing American English to UK English. It is. So one of them, so the difference is more like pronunciation and there are some words of also they are different so there are some words that we say in brazil that doesn't mean that don't mean this, the same thing in portugal and there are some words that they pronounce there that doesn't exist here so but it but basically these differences are in the spoken language okay so guys let's start it's 10 p.m you here on instagram I was here just to invite you guys, but to have a better experience in this class, I strongly suggest to you to come to our YouTube channel. If you don't know how to find us, just type yes, Portuguese there, and you find us, then just take the moment and subscribe to our channel. If you're not following us, if you're not subscribed to our channel on YouTube, you should do it now. You know why? And you also, guys, here on YouTube. So, you know why? Because we post new content every day. Every day there's a new video with a new tip for you. And we are there explaining some grammatical pattern or some vocabulary tip or some structures that you use in basic communication. Uh, or we, are, we have also... A playlist in our YouTube channel where we say things about like um, popular sayings in Brazil um, and also Brazilian popular sayings and also Brazilian slangs and idioms so a lot of nice things for you they are learning Portuguese so subscribe to our channel this is really helpful and also when you subscribe it also helps us 
So guys, see you in our YouTube channel. Enjoy the class. Ciao, ciao. No, not ciao for you guys. I was just saying goodbye to people in our YouTube channel, in, in our Instagram, not for you. So let's start our class. Are you ready? So guys, uh, here we go. Yay, aula do yes. Live class, toda terça-feira, every Tuesday, here in our YouTube channel, just starting on time. Yeah, no techno issues this time. No delays, we are on time. Actually, I was here 10 minutes before. So, uh, guys, it's 8 p.m. New York City time. So, for you that are a newcomer, it's your first time here with us every Tuesday at 8 p.m. New York City time or 10 p.m. in Brazil. We have Brazil, Brazilian time, okay, guy? Or Sao Paulo time, because Brazil has different time zones as well. Um, so, every Tuesday here, on YouTube, we have live class. Very good. So, you're here. Aula do Yes, dia 14 de janeiro de 2020. Differences between Brazilian Portuguese and European Portuguese. What are the differences between this language, these two variations of the same language? So let's see some of them today. A lot of people, lots of people sent message to us asking, what are the differences between Brazilian Portuguese and European Portuguese? And I'll tell the secret, the biggest difference is one is in Europe and another in the other one is here in um, South America. So this is the huge difference is the location. Okay. So another big difference is culture. They are culturally different, but what matters for us when we are trying to speak one variation or the other variation is the sound, okay? Is the pronunciation. So if you want to sound more like a Portuguese person, it's important to pay attention to some sounds and some, uh, and some ways they, they say things. But if you want to sound more like a Brazilian, you need to pay attention to other kind of sounds. Okay? So we're going to see this in this class. That's the point of the class today. Um, let me see here. Guys, this is our second class of the year. <laughs> I was so excited about that because the first class, the last class of the last year was with me, and the first was with Luigi. So I was so excited and I was waiting so much for this class to be here with you guys for our second class of the year so i couldn't forget to say that and it's the first class with teacher dri and i'm so happy i'm always so happy to be here i love teaching here uh let me see what you're saying there are some comments okay so estou aqui de novo olá olá olá, olá. Vocês me fazem feliz, hein, Mariana Neal? Olá! Estava esperando aqui no YouTube. Holy Anne, olá! There's a lot of to pee and African influence in Brazilian Portuguese. Yeah, Jacob? Yeah, that's correct. Ah, uh, no, Tocantins is to pee for Tucans. Pick. <laughs> really? That's nice. I didn't knew that. I didn't know that. Eu sei porque eu pratico capoeira, eu posso ver a cultura da África. Que legal. That's true. That's so awesome. Muito bem, gente. Então, vamos lá. For you, there are, newcom there are newcomers here. So, I don't know. Are there any newcomer here? Anyone that is new and haven't been here before? That have never watched a class here on YouTube? So you can say that you're a newcomer if you were following us on Instagram, but you've never been here in our YouTube channel. So just post in the comment section. I don't know where is it for you, but I, I think it's here. Here. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, just write, write in the comment section, hashtag newcomer, okay? If you are a student in our course, identify yourself. We have a Yapper family. 
So just use the hashtag Yapper that identify you. Let's show the world that you are studying with us the course that will help you to influence in Portuguese. And if you are just following us for a while, and if you like our content, and if you like to be here with us every Tuesday, use this hashtag YesPortuholic, which means you are a fan of Yes Portuguese, and I love that. So guys, let's see. Pink for Yes Portuholic, yay. Oh, you have a yappers. Ah, yapper. Here in Brazilian, my name wrong, made me so happy. You're so beautiful. I pronounce your name, your, your name wrong? I'm so sorry. It's not, oh, it's Marina. I, 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 I'm sorry, I read Mariana, I'm sorry. Okay. You are new here, Mariana. It's a newcomer. Marina, I'm sorry. I'm saying Mariana. It's Marina. Marina. But your name is Brazilian. Are you Brazilian? I guess. Hey, Charles. Hey, hey, Kevin. You lost connection. Oh. Oh, God. Vanessa, newcomer. That's awesome. Simone, newcomer. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Amazing. I like to see you all here. I'm so happy. I'm really glad to see you here. Oi! I, guys, I will apologize to Marina, to everyone that I'm saying the name wrong. I'm sorry, because I'm saying I'm pronouncing your name terrible today. I'm so sorry. Let's see, what do we have here? I wonder if my name would be changed in pronunciation. My friend asked his name sounds different. Alice in English, Alice in Portuguese. But yeah, but per, people would say pure, I guess. I don't know. Okay, guys, some is crackling. I'm sorry. No, it's not raining here. Not right now. The sound is bad. How is that? Audio problem. I don't know. How is that possible? Your name is Ashley. Ah, now I know your name. How is the sound now, guys? Is it fine? Mm, maybe it's because it's... I don't know. It's pretty low. What about now? I speak more close to it. Okay. Ashley. Ashley. People would say ah, Ashley. Maybe. And now, what about now, guys? Let's test it. Mm. How is that? Not good. No. Eu acho que é o adaptador. Tá ruim mesmo. Pera aí, guys. Eu vou resolver. Um minuto, um minuto. Pera aí. Eu vou, eu vou tirar a câmera. Tá? Guys. I will disappear just a little bit now. No. Uh, hello, guys. Can you hear me? Is it better?
Let's see. Now you see me in a second. Mm -hmm. No, eh, but eh. What about now? Can you see me? Tá melhor? Now you can see me? Aê! Muito bem! One second. Oh, God. Ha, ha, professora voltou, estou de volta. Sorry, guys, I'm back. I'm sorry about it. Technical issues. Oh, my God, it's like a... How can you say that? It's a curse. Because every time I have a live class, I have some technical problem. If it's not in the beginning, it's in the middle of it. I can't believe that. <laughs> I disappear, buddy. <laughs> okay, okay. So that's fine. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. So let's come back here, guys. So I was asking you to post, to identify. No sound again. I can believe it. No, you have sound, right? You have sound. Can't you hear me, Kevin? What is going on? I think now everything is working. Okay. So, guys, I was asking you to identify yourself. Okay. Uh, okay. I was asking you to identify yourself in the, the comment section using some of these hashtags and you already did it that's fine and another thing that i could uh, that i want to ask you is and this is really nice guys it's very important for us every time you're here in a live class just share it in your social media because this help other people see us okay so do it as a favor please and then tag us tag yes portuguese okay at yes portuguese I have a remind for you for our Instagram class on Thursday at 1 p.m. New York City time. If you can make it, it will be awesome because in this class, what we have is a speaking practice. So I will call three students live with me and we will um, do a speaking practice on three words to pronounce in Portuguese. So we have some tricky and difficult words that I ask you to pronounce and also you can practice other kind of conversation while you're live with me. So I'll call three students. Okay? So if you are available at this time, just come to the class on Thursday. Muito bom. And uh, I will just start talking about and uh, showing you a video and talking about the topic of today's class. And I send the study material to our you, uh, um, WhatsApp group. So here is the address. If you're a newcomer and you're not in this WhatsApp group, join it now and then you're going to receive every Tuesday, you will receive a dialogue that will help you to improve your listening skills. It's a conversation that we create based on real communication and uh, you're going to hear to listen to natives speakers. So you listen to it and you also receive a transcription and a translation. And then you can study and acquire more vocabulary and things like that. So join this group and also the PDF file for the class. All right? Muito bom. Very good. So guys, let's talk about the class. Jacob already did this for me. I want 20 likes, please, at the end of this class and I will check it. Okay? So I need you to help me to achieve 20 likes so go there click on the like button please that helps a lot subscribe to the channel if you're a newcomer if you're not subscribed to the channel we are guys we have 900 a little bit more than 900 followers here on youtube 
This is a victory for us. This is a win. And uh, we are growing the community of people learning Portuguese online. And uh, I want to get to thousand, a thousand followers. So help us to do that. Subscribe to the channel and um, also share to your friends, to your family, to people that are also learning Portuguese and invite them to subscribe to our channel. We are family. You know, our students, the yappers, they know we are kind of a family and uh, it's important because we, what we do is to help each other. My students help me to improve my English pronunciation and I, uh, and I acquire more vocabulary and structures, English structures while talking to them. And I am helping you or trying to help you to learn Portuguese. So what we do here is like an exchange of knowledge, guys. So when you share our content, if you like it, you're going to help more people, right? So gratitude in Portuguese is gratidão. Gratidão, Marina. Okay? Or would be Marina, I don't know. Yeah, that's correct, Ashley. Now I'm going to call you by your name. That's easier. <laughs> okay. Let's see what he's saying here. I like your risada. Thank you. It's fun to pronounce words, but I, I do get nervous and get to argue with Instagram. <laughs> Gosto das aulas no Instagram. Me too. They are really nice. They are funny. I appreciate all the free work you guys do to help learners. Muita gratidão. Thank you. 13 likes. Yay! Seven to go. I like my assistant. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> you do an amazing job. It is strange. I don't know a single person outside of this class who is learning Portuguese. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. It's no problem. I have a remind. Precisa I have a, a reminder. Aha, a reminder. Thank you. Muito obrigada. So, Marina, just a tip for you. It's muito, muita gratidão. Gratidão is a feminine word, okay? So you need to make the agreement here. Okay, very good. So now let's do a little bit of an, a practice. Say your name with this structure or using this second one. So meu nome é Adriele. Eu sou a Adriele. And while you write it in the comment, pronounce it to yourself out loud. So say meu nome é Adriele. So you say your name. Or eu sou a Adriele. So say it out loud. It's important when you're trying to improve your pronunciation. It's important you say it out loud. Okay? Eu sou do Brasil. And you say your country where you are from. Okay? Let's see. I have Brazilian neighbors a block away. And I met a girl who works at a local store. She's from Brasilia. That's nice. So you have people to practice with. It's not a popular language for gringos to study. Uh, it's not. Spanish and French are more popular. And German. Yeah. Yeah, Brasilia, yes. That's correct. Instagram still likes to mute my live videos. I'm currently trying to figure it out. Oh. Meu nome is Meu nome é Greg. I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry. Greg Hag. Meu nome é Ashley, eu sou dos Estados Unidos. Não, <risos> Caju. Eu sou o Jacob, eu sou do Canadá, que legal. Meu nome é Gary, eu sou da Inglaterra. Meu nome é Quentin, eu sou da Trinidade e Tobago, right? Yeah. Meu nome é Safe, eu moro em Londres. Muito bem, you were the best, you were awesome. Who else wants to introduce yourself? Eu sou a Vanessa. Muito bem, Vanessa. <coughs> ok, guys. Então, vamos lá. Quem tem o material, who has the study material, pega o seu material, se prepara para aula. Agora é hora de entrar no modo aula. It's, to, it's the time to focus, concentrate. 
concentra e bora estudar, beleza? Então vamos lá, todo mundo pronto? Bora começar, isso aí, vamos lá. So what we have is this, the study material, Brazilian or European Portuguese? Brazilian Portuguese versus European Portuguese. You know the story, right? You know Brazilian, Brazil was colonized. I don't know if this word exists, but I will use this anyway. You know, Portugal t took their boats and they were traveling to India, but they just had a pit stop in Brazil and they found us. They found our land here in South America. This is called Brazilian discovery or finding. I don't know. So Brazil was was discovered by Portugal, but it's better to say that Brazil was found because Brazil already existed. And here in Brazil, we had a population of indigenous people living here, you know? So we had many different tribes living here many different tribes because you know the size of this country you know we have today uh many states brazil is divided in many states and you have the north region the northeast the south region the southeast the center region so this is a huge country uh and a lot of people was living here and we had a wonderful nature yeah so many forests forests in the coast forests inside the country and uh, the beautiful beach they are still there but a little bit different uh, so when portuguese people arrived here in brazil they already had a solid history and they were already a country uh, with some political, uh, economic mm, structure and issues. So they traveled in that time. Spain was uh, the Spain and England. They are also exploring all the lands. So England arrived to the U.S. Spain arrived in other countries in the South America and in the Central America and Portugal arrived here in Brazil and some other parts of Africa and also England and Spain and anyway, you know, you know the story probably, uh, especially the story of your country. So um, when Portugal arrived here, we had this many tribes living here. So they, get in, they got in contact. So, uh, and what happened is indigenous people with their um, language and uh, specific sounds and words, they got in contact with Portuguese people and their specific sounds, words, structures. And then the colonization of Brazil started. Not only the colonization of the land, but of the people as well. And also of the things we had here. And Portugal, uh, in, with the willing to get more, make more money with the resources that we had in Brazil, they brought people from Africa. And uh, Africa is also a huge continent. And there are a lot of people there with different, um, in, a, in that time and also today, there were already a lot of tribes, different uh, people with different culture and languages. And then that people that when, when they arrived in Brazil, they brought with them their language, culture and uh, relation, the structure. And that mixed with indigenous languages, there were many, not just one, African languages and Portuguese and then also other people from other European countries and also from Asia, they came to Brazil. And when they arrived here, we had this mixture that what create Brazilian Portuguese. 
And all other important thing is where people establish themselves in Brazil, people from different places, uh, it also makes the accents we have in Brazil different. So in the Northeast, people had a different accent from the Southeast, from like even in Minas Gerais, that is my state, we have different accents depending on the region of the state because it's big state. And also, I'm close to Rio, but it, we, not so close, but I'm close. And we speak different from people from here. So those differences are not by accident. They happen because of the contact uh, we had in that regions, because of the people that were living there, you know? So, but basically, what makes Brazilian different, Brazilian Portuguese different from European Portuguese is this mixture we had here, okay? So guys, I was giving a history class, but we want to talk actually about linguistics, about language, but this is also important, right? Uh, and I loved my country and I loved this story. Sometimes I feel a little bit angry, but that's fine. <laughs> Okay, because if, you, if it wasn't Portugal coming here, I wasn't speaking Portuguese and I wasn't teaching you Portuguese. So I'm actually grateful for that. So let's see what you're saying here. Um, uh, actually, you're saying my sister's calling me cashew. She said if you travel, it'd be funny because it, it's what I like to snack on. <laughs> Oh my God, I have your notifications on. Thank you for telling about the feminine gratidão. So, dos Estados Unidos, que legal. Sim, Trinidad e Tobago. Meu nome é Shane, eu moro na Irlanda. Pretty late. E there, prontinho. Thank you. Uh, desculpa for calling you Adriela, not Adriele. Don't worry, no problem at all. Colonize correct. Thank you. Meu nome é Aditya, sou da Indonésia. Awesome. Portuguese colonization, King Dom Pedro. Yeah. No. King João. Dom Pedro was the emperor of Brazil, the first emperor. And then Dom Pedro, Dom Pedro II was the second emperor. If I recall correct, I like homework. Discovered, founded, yeah, colonized by Portugal. Thank you. This is, save, actually, this is something nice. Because it's a difference between um, UK English and the North American English. It's colonize. Someone just wrote colonize. Yeah, Jacob wrote colonize with Z. And the uh, safe wrote colonize with S. So that's so nice, guys. It's a difference between U UK English and British English and American English. I love it. That's what you're talking on today. Uh, também Caribe, yeah, yeah, gold, gold, they wanted gold, about the time it was being introduced to the trade boats, yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah, a little bit later in the, in the time, my cousin has a different accent than my friend from Rio, my cousin is from Salvador, yes, for sure, history is fun, free history lesson, I love history, guys, and I also love languages, so let's, get going with this okay so uh i made an introduction for you just saying hello yes portugalics the best portuguese students in the entire world yeah you are the best student in the world because you're here with me and i love it and you i know you're doing your best learning portuguese um while you're trying to learn Portuguese because you came to this class you come to this class every Tuesday this is awesome so guys I will start then showing you a video of the it's a conversation between these two comedians uh, one is Ricardo and the other is Gregorio and they are talking about the differences one of the part of this conversation they have in this play, it's a kind of a play, they, it's um, about the differences between European and Brazilian Portuguese. So we are going to listen to that, but without this transcription here first, 
and then I play again and you can read the transcription as well. So if you have your material with you now in your hands, don't read the transcription, okay? So let's begin. I need to do this. Just one second because I need to set something here. Okay. Uh, que era falar um pouco sobre a maneira como a língua que a gente fala é de facto muito parecida, mas não é a mesma. Uh, nós tínhamos, eu, eu tenho, por exemplo, está mais perto, desculpem, eu tenho, eu tenho opiniões muito fortes relativamente à maneira como vocês usam a língua portuguesa e eu sei que o Gregório também tem relativamente à maneira como os portugueses a usam. Eu, no meu caso, ofendo-me particularmente que vocês falem com as vogais todas abertas. Uh, acho isso uma coisa cansativa, cansativa para, para os maxilares. Uh, acho que é abusar das palavras. E, e, sobretudo, há uma coisa estranha para mim, que é quando nós, de facto, abrimos as vogais, vocês fecham, só para chatear. Por exemplo, por exemplo, quando nós abrimos, quando nós dizemos bebê, vocês dizem bebê. A gente diz cocó, vocês cocô. E, portanto, a gente nunca consegue entender-se. Porque quando vocês abrem, a gente fecha, e quando a gente fecha, vocês abrem. Eu queria dizer que me incomoda o contrário. Há um fenômeno que eu chamo de austeridade vocálica. Porque a economia das vogais nos portugueses é algo que realmente me consterna. Por que, por exemplo, na palavra confortável, vocês falam confortável? Existe palavra menos confortável do que confortável? É um encontro consonantal que só existe no português lusitano. Nem no húngaro. Você tem C-N-F-R-T. Comfort, comfort, confortável. Toda palavra em português de Portugal tem pressa de chegar no fim dela, já percebeu? Confortável. Então, tem uma outra coisa que eu demorei muito para entender, que é eu vou te ligar, te ligo, vou te... Telefonte. Telefonte. Parece, né, um alemão meio... É, parece yiddish. Telefonte. E eu... outra que eu amo também, colesterol. Colesterol, parece russo, né? É colesterol. Colesterol. Ela é uma palavra que rima, colesterol. Eu, eu constato que quando tu dizes colesterol à portuguesa, o público brasileiro só percebeu de que é que tu estavas a falar quando tu disseste colesterol. É incrível, é de facto impenetrável. Que eu às vezes ouço, estou no estrangeiro, por exemplo, e, e há um casal, estou no elevador, e há um casal de portugueses que começa a falar, e eu primeiro penso, eh, serão russos? São... Ah não, são portugueses. São... Porque é de facto a, a nossa maneira de falar parece, parece russo. What did you understood of this conversation? Was this nice? So, um, who is Portuguese and who is Brazilian? Quem é português e quem é brasileiro? Ricardo ou Gregório? Ricardo é brasileiro, is Brazilian or he is Portuguese? And Gregório, is he Portuguese or is he Brazilian? What do you say to me? And while you answer my question, let me read the comments. Uh, oh, Ashley said, well, to learn anything, you need the basics. History explains the difference. I had to learn the Louisiana Purchase and Immigration before I learned Cajun French. Cajun French? I don't know how to pronounce that. And that's a regional language to my home. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, organization as well, safe. That's true. That's nice. Uh, somos os melhores alunos porque temos duas professoras boas. Ah, guys, you're in my heart. Estão no meu coração. Oi, Cris, tudo bem? Ei, Kira, you are so here and you're laughing. <laughs> They are funny. He's so right. They skip half the word in Portugal. Hey, mãe. Miriam Laviar is my mom, guys. Right off the bat, I can notice he has a bit more throat sounds and it blends sounds in a bit with other languages. To me, it sounds like Brazilian Portuguese mixed a bit of German or Russian. Yeah, they say that. But that's just the sound. I can understand him. On the left is Portuguese. What are you? 
A guy with a bur is Brazilian. Primeiro português, yes, português. Second guy is português. That's correct. No, safe. Yeah, the first guy. Let me show you again. This guy, he is Portuguese. He's from Portugal. And this guy, where is he? Yeah, this guy, he's Brazilian. So let's listen again and I'll put the transcription here then you can follow, okay? What do you say? Uh, oops, 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 one second. Uh, okay. But it's Brazilian, it sounds so difficult. <laughs> yeah. For me as well. Okay. Uh, que era falar um pouco sobre a maneira como a língua que a gente fala é de facto muito parecida, mas não é a mesma. Uh, nós tínhamos, eu, eu tenho, por exemplo, está mais perto, desculpem, eu tenho, eu tenho opiniões muito fortes relativamente à maneira como vocês usam a língua portuguesa e eu sei que o Gregório também tem relativamente à maneira como os portugueses a usam. Eu, no meu caso, ofendo-me particularmente que vocês falem com as vogais todas abertas. Uh, acho isso uma coisa cansativa, cansativa para, para os maxilares. Uh, acho que é abusar das palavras. E, e, sobretudo, há uma coisa estranha para mim, que é quando nós, de facto, abrimos as vogais, vocês fecham, só para chatear. Por exemplo, por exemplo, quando nós abrimos, quando nós dizemos bebê, vocês dizem bebê. A gente diz cocó, vocês cocô. E, portanto, a gente nunca consegue entender-se. Porque quando vocês abrem, a gente fecha, e quando a gente fecha, vocês abrem. Eu queria dizer que me incomoda o contrário. Há um fenômeno que eu chamo de austeridade vocálica. Porque a economia das vogais nos portugueses é algo que realmente me consterna. Por que, por exemplo, na palavra confortável, vocês falam confortável? Existe palavra menos confortável do que confortável? É um encontro consonantal que só existe no português lusitano. Nem no húngaro. Você tem C-N-F-R-T. Comfort, comfort, confortável. Toda palavra em português de Portugal tem pressa de chegar no fim dela, já percebeu? Confortável. Então, tem uma outra coisa que eu demorei muito para entender, que é eu vou te ligar, te ligo, vou te... Telefonte. Telefonte. Parece, né, um alemão meio... É, parece yiddish. Telefonte. E eu, outra que eu amo também, colesterol. Colesterol, parece russo, né? É colesterol. Colesterol. Ela é uma palavra que rima, colesterol. Eu, eu constato que quando tu dizes colesterol à portuguesa, o público brasileiro só percebeu de que é que tu estavas a falar quando tu disseste colesterol. É incrível, é de facto impenetrável. Eu às vezes ouço, estou no estrangeiro, por exemplo, e, e há um casal, estou no elevador, e há um casal de portugueses que começa a falar, e eu primeiro penso, eh, serão russos? São... Ah não, são portugueses. São... Porque é de facto a, a nossa maneira de falar parece russo. Guys, I just want to remind you something. This is a comedy, okay? They are comedians. So they are making fun of their languages, all right? So don't take too serious what they are saying because they are making fun of it. It's just for us to, to laugh. So when Gregorio says that Portu European Portuguese sounds like Yiddish or Russian, German, a mix of German and Russian and Yiddish, but not Portuguese. He's making fun, okay? So, <laughs> he's supposed to laugh about it. Uh, okay, let me see. Posso entender o primeiro, mas o segundo eu não entendo. So, you, un you understand better the Portuguese guy and not the Brazilian one. Ah, this is a surprise. They're nice. Very good, guys. So, um... We listened to them, we saw them speaking. Uh, we are going to listen again because I want, I want just to show you something interesting here. So let's start with uh, talking about the differences. What can you find as a difference in this conversation? 
when you listen to um, Ricardo speaking, the Portuguese guy, what can you identify that is really different from Gregorio? Okay, so if you don't, if you want to know the meaning of the conversation, you have the translation here, guys. Okay, so in the end of your study material, you have the translation. All right, because I'm not going to translate everything. That's why I added the translation here in your study material. All right, so then um, let's talk about the sounds differences here. In this class, we only talk about differences in pronunciation. And I have just picked some words to, for you to see some differences in vocabulary and in structure, okay? But let's start talking about this sound. Um, oh, important thing here that I wrote here and I was waiting, uh, forgetting. Also, you need to be aware that most of the time, you only see the differences in speaking and not in writing. The written form is mostly the same in Portugal and in Brazil, okay? But the sounds are different. different. It's a funny comedy conversation, yeah. And this is actually bigger than that and it's really nice to watch it. Just look on YouTube for Portugal e Brasil Diferenças Linguísticas. This is a really good video to watch. So guys, let's talk about the first difference in sound that you can see here. The L sound. L. Okay? So the L in the end of words and syllables in Brazilian Portuguese sound like U. So I will read these three words for you. So you say, in Brazil we say papel. Papel. Mel. Mel, Brazil, Brazil, not papel, mel, Brazil, okay? In European Portuguese, on the other hand, the sound is the same as in English. So they would say papel, mel, Brazil, Brazil, but it's different, mel, Brazil, okay? The L, we sound like L, but here in Brazil, these sound like U. Papel, meu, Brasil. Okay, so if you want to sound like a Brazilian, you're supposed to say papel, meu, Brasil. And to sound like an European, uh, like a Portuguese guy or girl, you probably would need a uh, more help of a Portuguese native speaker, like Portuguese from Portugal, to say papel, Mel Brazil correctly. What about the O in the end of words? So in Brazil, the letter O in the end of words normally sounds like U, like carro, carro, martelo, martelo, afeto, afeto, acordo. Acordo. Okay? In European Portuguese, they often keep the original sound of the letter O. So, carro, martelo, afeto, acordo. Okay? It's different. Carro in Brazil, carro in Portugal. Martelo in Brazil, martelo in Portugal. Afeto for us in Brazil, afeto in Portugal. Acordo, acordo, okay? And the third different difference that we have here is the sound of vowels. So in Portuguese, we can identify the sound of vowels easier than in Portugal. You see Gregorio in the video, he makes fun with the word comfortable, com comfortable, that is confortável, confortável in Portuguese, in European Portuguese, confortável, confortável. And in Brazil, it's confortável. You see, you hear the vowels here more clear, in, you know? Confortável. This is Brazilian Portuguese. Confortável. In European Portuguese, you have the vowels there, but they just skip them. They say confortável, confortável. 
something like that, I guess. So you see when he's, he talks about costral in European Portuguese, costral, costral, that is colesterol in Brazil, colesterol. So you hear clearly all the vowels in Brazilian Portuguese, okay? Uh, so the impressions that we Brazilian have when listening to someone speaking European Portuguese is that this person is only saying consonants. Yeah, because they skip the vowels. And the Portuguese is normally say vowels with a closed sound. So when Brazilian we say them, we, even, we Brazilians, we say them with an open sound. Okay, but of course we have vowels, uh, we have words with vowels with closed sounds like Flor, amor, avô, vermelho, terreno, and many, 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 many others. You know, Ricardo, uh, the other comedian, the Portuguese comedian in, in the video, he says that when the Portuguese people open the vowels, the sound, we close them just to upset them. So they say bebe, it's a baby, bebe, and we say bebe in Brazil, bebe, e sound. So it's like this. Oh, I write it here. So they say bebe, and we say bebe, and both mean baby, right? So they open and we close. They say coco, and we say coco. It's puppy, okay? Shit. <laughs> so uh, they open and we close, right? Uh, so guys, now let's listen to them because I want to show something specific from what they say. Let's see if you can recognize those differences here in the video. But before, let's see the comments. Because Brazilian is fashion, yeah. The sound for me anyways, other than that, it's a funny comment conversation. Is the link to the video in the study material? I'm driving and I haven't seen yet. Oh, I don't, I don't remember. If it's not, I can send to the WhatsApp group anyways, okay? Brazilian Portuguese is a bit more relaxed, smooth in pronunciation, a bit faster than what I hear. European Portuguese is lower and they enunciate certain, enunciate a certain vowels. Yeah, actually, I guess. Well said. Ok, 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 muito bom. Let's listen to them again. Uh, que era falar um pouco sobre a maneira como a língua que a gente fala é de facto muito parecida, mas não é a mesma. Uh, nós tínhamos... Eu, eu tenho, por exemplo... Está mais perto, desculpem. Eu tenho, eu tenho opiniões muito fortes relativamente à maneira como vocês usam a língua portuguesa e eu sei que o Gregório também tem relativamente à maneira como os portugueses a usam. Eu, no meu caso, ofendo-me particularmente que vocês falem com as vogais todas abertas. Uh, acho isso uma coisa cansativa, cansativa para, para os maxilares. Uh, acho que é abusar das palavras. E, e, sobretudo, há uma coisa estranha para mim, que é quando nós, de facto, abrimos as vogais, vocês fecham, só para chatear. Por exemplo, por exemplo quando nós abrimos, quando nós dizemos bebê, vocês dizem bebê. A gente diz cocó, vocês cocô. E, portanto, a gente nunca consegue entender-se. Porque quando vocês abrem, a gente fecha, e quando a gente fecha, vocês abrem. Yeah. Ah. Okay, guys, pay attention to this. Uh, beyond these differences in pronunciation, they are stating in their talking. I want to just real, uh, highlight something here. It's not for this side. So in Portugal, they say this word facto. It's fact. Okay? In Brazil, we write it and we say it different. We say fato. Ok? It's the same word, but in Portugal they say facto, as, they, as he, said, he says in the video. 
facto, you, you hear the C, facto. Here in Brazil, you say fato. You don't hear the C, fato, ok? Oh, you can hear to it. Fecha vocês abrem. Eu queria dizer que me incomoda o contrário, um, um fenômeno que eu chamo de austeridade vocálica, porque a economia das vogais nos portugueses é algo que realmente me consterna. Por que, por exemplo, na palavra confortável, vocês falam confortável? Existe palavra menos confortável do que confortável? É um encontro consonantal que só existe no português lusitano. Nem no húngaro você tem C, N, F, R, T. Comfort, comfort, confortável. Toda palavra em português de Portugal tem pressa de chegar no fim dela, já percebeu? Confortável. Então, tem uma outra coisa que eu demorei muito para entender, que é eu vou te ligar, te ligo, vou... Telefonte. Telefonte. Parece, né, um alemão meio... É, parece yiddish. Telefonte. E eu... outra que eu amo também, colstrol. Colstrol, parece russo, né? É colesterol. Caustral. Ela é uma palavra que rima. Caustral. Eu, eu constato que quando tu dizes colstrol à portuguesa, o público brasileiro só percebeu de que é que tu estavas a falar quando tu disseste colesterol. É incrível, é de facto impenetrável. Eu às vezes ouço, estou no estrangeiro, por exemplo, e, e há um casal, estou no elevador, e há um casal de portugueses que começa a falar, e eu primeiro penso, serão russos? São... Ah, não, são portugueses. São... Porque é, de facto, a, ma a nossa maneira de falar parece, parece russo. <risos> ok. Ano uh... Now, another difference that I want to show you is here. Here, when he says... O público brasileiro só percebeu o que é que tu estavas a falar. Oh, I will paste it here and make it bigger. So, o público brasileiro só percebeu o que é que tu estavas a falar. This structure is totally European Portuguese. In Brazil, we would say this sentence like this. O público brasileiro só percebeu que tu estava... We wouldn't say tu, we would say o que você estava falando. So, it starts the difference here. They, prefer, they conjugate a second person, tu, they use it, the second person. We prefer the pronoun você, in most part of the Brazil, but of course there are regions here that use tu. And, uh, but we prefer você. Estava, and then we conjugate in the third person, estava. And then in this structure, when you use it, this, it's the continuous tense, you know? When something is happening in the present. Uh, in Portugal, they prefer this structure, the preposition plus a verb in the infinitive form. And in Brazil, we use the gerum, gerum, gerum. I don't know this, how to pronounce this word in English, but it's gerundio that is formed with and n d o and you add it to the verb ok so o público brasileiro só percebeu o que é que você estava falando this is brazilian this is portuguese european portuguese o público brasileiro só percebeu o que é que tu estavas a falar se você escutar if you hear to this one It's European Portuguese, and if you hear to this second structure, it's Brazilian Portuguese. Okay? Um, second thing that I want to show you here is oiso. We don't have this word in Brazil. Oiso. We used to have, but not anymore. Actually, it's the same as also. It's the first person singular of the verb ouvir in the present. Ouvir, ouço. 
And oiso is the same thing. Okay, so oiso is Portuguese, European Portuguese. Also is Brazilian Portuguese. All right? So if you hear he's saying eu às vezes oiço, but in Brazil you'd say eu às vezes ouço, vou ouço, all right? That's really fun. The differences in the language is really fun. Ah, another thing that I want to show you. Gregório says this here. Tem uma outra coisa que demorei muito para entender. Que é, vou te ligar ou te ligo. This is what you use in Brazilian. In Brazil. In Brazil. In Brazilian Portuguese. Vou te ligar, te ligo. In Portugal, they say, telefonte. 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 They eat the O. They don't say the O. And they say, telefonte. Ok? It's, I'll call you. Right? But in Brazil, they say, vou te ligar ou te ligo. Ou te telefono. We could say, telefono. But we say all the vowels, telefono, ok? It's telefono. In Portugal, they'd say tele, telefonte, right? And they prefer to put the pronoun, the oblique pronoun, in the end of the verb, after the verb. And we prefer to put it in the beginning. It's not incorrect, both of them are correct grammatically, but this is more formal. And the European Portuguese is actually more formal than Brazilian Portuguese, right? We are more informal and we are more like relaxed and we make fun of everything. So we are the queen, the king and the queens of memes, you know that? <laughs> so, but anyway, te ligo, te telefono would be more used in Brazil. Telefono te, or tele telefone, it's more used in Portugal. Right? So, guys, these were the differences that I wanted to show you today. They are many. They are huge. And I don't have the time to talk about all of them here. And I, I actually don't have... Uh, I, um, you know, it's already 11 p.m. in Brazil. So, I would need many classes like that to talk about other differences between Brazilian Portuguese and European Portuguese. I will talk about, about it uh, in another class because I like to talk about the difference between them. It's nice. Let's see on the comment. Yeah, Quentin, penso que brasileiro falou rápido. Probably is that. Marina is saying how different the sound to a non-familiar ear that sound like two different languages spoken. This is why I explore Portuguese instead of the usual second language for native in the States and Spanish. And the Spanish also has some differences as well, depending on where you are, right? It's not all the, it's not all, uh, always the same. Jerome, thank you, Kira, thank you. Portuguese is one of the fastest growing language in the States after Spanish, English and French. So we are after this, the four. But one advantage of learning Portuguese, guys, is since it's not, this is the first That the first, the fifth language most spoken in the entire world, and it's the fourth. It's the fourth in the U.S. as a second language, as you as Ashley saying there, uh, and also since there are not so many people trying to learn it, you have less competition, and then if you want to find a job in a place like Brazil or Portugal. You, since you are learning Portuguese and this language is and the, and the interest in Portuguese is growing around the world uh, it, if you learn Portuguese you be you know ahead of many people uh, let, me, let me read the other comments I want to learn for both fun and to communicate that's great then it will look glorious on the resume as well thanks for and me too i feel it's spoken more than i guess need to be part of it yeah welcome marina that's awesome to have you here and and know that i see so many carnival customers around memes i look forward to this year <laughs> yeah guys carnival is coming thank you for reminding me 
Um, this year on Carnival, we are going to have a meeting in Rio de Janeiro with Yepers, with our students. So it's going a to be a special meeting. You're going to meet in person our students. So if you're around, if you're in Rio, just send your name to us in our WhatsApp. Just tell that you'll be in Rio and the dates you'll be there. And uh, you can meet us, okay? It'll be awesome to see, to know you in person. Okay, guys, uh, I'm happy that we had this class. I hope you had like it. Uh, I hope had, you had have fun. You had fun. And I hope to see you on Thursday in my class on Instagram, okay? To make a speaking practice with me, to have a speaking practice with me. Hope to see you there. One second, guys. What is happening? I don't know, but I'm back. Try to read. Sorry. Coming back. Oh my god. Okay, now can you hear me? It's better now. Okay, guys, I was just saying, if you're around and in Carnival, just let me know, uh, let us know, send us a message, because I'll be on Rio and it'll be nice to meet you there if you're around, okay? So I hope you had enjoyed this class, I hope you had fun, and I hope to see you on, thir on Thursday for my class on Instagram, okay? It'd be really nice if you come and have a speaking practice with me. Um beijinho pra vocês, boa noite e até quinta-feira, tá bom? Tchau, tchau. Tchau, gente. Obrigada pela aula. Thank you for the class. The class was awesome, as always, because of you. Muito obrigada, gente, pela aula. A aula foi ótima, como sempre, por causa de vocês. Então, até já. Até mais. Tchau, tchau. Beijo, beijo, beijo. Thank you, thank you all.